Welcome to the show, you guys. I'm so happy to have you on Owning Your Legacy after the show, which is even more fun. And if you don't mind introducing yourselves for our listeners, please. My name is Jill Divel Closier. My name is Israel Santiestevan. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you getting to witness this and and support him. And, and so tell us how you know how it how it is to deal with him on a daily basis because I really liked that question. Oh, patience. Patience. <laughs> patience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but patience and love. Yes. yes. He is he's a good man. Yeah. He Just. raves about he raves about you. I love when he was doing the pre call with the the Simply Be team, and he was like, "My purpose is my wife," and I'm like, "We all need a husband just like that." That yeah. is, thank you. That is very nice. Yeah. So I would love to hear a little bit about what you do in terms of supporting refugees that come into the United States. Yeah, um, help me and support me a lot. Yeah. With this part, with my family. Yeah. He support me for bringing uh, some family here. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. For my um, side, for my family. Well, no, he's, he's family in, uh, at all, yes. But but you are now. Yeah, no, now, yeah. They adopted me. You have a, do you have a big family? Yes, I have a big family, yeah. my family. Now my family is from uh, in, in different countries now for the immigration from my family from Venezuela. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they um look in better life. Yes. And they go for many countries in the world. Wow. But now I have um lucky because my husband helped me and support me bring some family here with me. So who's here with you? Do you have sisters or brothers or brother, cousin, uh mother, uh brother in law, um Yes, now uh, we are 22, 25 people in total. Here? Yeah. Here. At yeah. the same time in the house, we were only 16. Yeah. 16 no, in your house? 20, 20. <laughs> the last year in my house was 20 people. Do you have a mansion? Uh, <laughs> no. A little bit for I... Um, Chain the office for a uh, room. <laughs> Bunk beds? His, his, his office chain for a room. Oh, wow. For uh, the basement, many rooms. And yeah. yeah, but yeah. But I'm happy because That's before huge. I am alone. Yeah. But I don't feel alone now. Are they all in the Chicago area now? Yes, in, in Hinsdale. In Hinsdale. I have family in Hinsdale. I'm in New Jersey. Okay. And Denver. And, and Denver, too. Ah. Yes, in Denver was the first, um, my brother mm. was the first um, people come. He helped me for being here. Are they, and they're, are they happy? Happy? Yes. Here? Great. He's married. He make uh, a good life in Denver. Nice. Yes. He come in some time for busy bis now. Yeah. But, yeah. My son's in Denver. I love Denver. Yes. Yeah, me too. It's, yes. It's, it's so fun. he was living with us in Denver when we told him we were moving out, and he said, I'm staying. <laughs> <laughs> really? So he really liked it and said, I'm yeah. going to stay here. Yes. Yeah. So talk a little bit, if you don't mind, about um, the community that you created in Denver with you know, women and, and coming with children and didn't know English, first language, and how, yeah. you, uh, yeah. how did you do that? Like, how did My most... purpose was um, help for Latin women, for them to speak English and feel alone in the United States. Mm -hmm. I um, learned, uh, learned that in Indiana, because in Indiana, many people help me for that. And for the woman for uh, help me, she died, she mm. passed away, mm -hmm. but I continue um, her learn about- Her legacy. The legacy, yes, Beautiful. in name uh, from her. I hear when you go back to Denver, you're like a rock star. Yes. They're like, there she is, the founder. Yes. Um, the, um, the group continue. I now um, two women is in charge mm -hmm. for uh, their friend, nice. and she continue the um, the group. And the woman is very happy for that because they have family, they have um, people uh, speak Spanish, mm -hmm. and the the kids continue to speak Spanish because when the kids stay here. 
um, live here in the United States lost the Spanish, but this is good. It's very good. Yes, the the kids continue to speak Spanish. Do your kids speak Spanish? They speak Spanish. That's great. And they speak English perfectly. That's beautiful. Yeah. It is such a strength. And I was just saying that at Edlong, I really wish that I could be fluent. I think I have to move down there for a while and immerse, but my kids might That's miss me a lot. But one of the things that we saw in the group in Denver with the Latin moms, it was through pandemia. Mm -hmm. If one mom got COVID, you remember nobody could get around. So they were doing these food trains and like delivering food to the family, taking care of the kids. So imagine people that are strangers to you, but they are united by being, you know, newcomers to the US and they were supporting each other. For us was, and, and self-started by them, uh, by the, the bond that they are now sharing. So, yeah. and this is all about kids yeah. and I'm, I'm saying kids, but babies. Like, right. it, it's impressive for me to see all these support system that they have created down, down there. Yes, always support her for everything, mm -hmm. for food or whatever she needs, because sometimes come here uh, mothers, um, single mom, mm -hmm. and they don't have a help, and don't have a, a work sometimes. Yeah. Yes, it's a lot of work. I um, stay in Chicago, but I supervise her all the time. and help her for distance, but mm -hmm. in touch her all the time. That's nice. Yeah, for what they need, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever thought of starting one in Chicago? I like yeah. a start, like a, what you did in Denver, but started here in Chicago? I try in Cleveland, because yeah. it's, uh, Chicago is my fourth uh, stay I live in here. But now it's different in my life. Yeah. Yes, in, in, in Denver, my um, uh, stay was different because my babies was three years old. It's a preschooler age, and looking mom for this year, and make um, construct the building mm -hmm. for a community. Yes. Yes, but now my life is different. Yeah. Is I I try in Cleveland, but I can't do it because for many things. But I put the um, the group different because um, for s social media, say what do you need and um, where you need uh, where you look in the food from Venezuela, Guatemala. It's information, right. information and event for kids. Mm -hmm. Th that's all. Yes, it's different because in Denver was personality is more touch. Yes, oh, but really? yes, my life for. Every um, age state is different. Uh -huh. Now here in Chicago is more different because um, um, now I continue my career. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. studying early childhood education right yeah, now. Yeah, I studying. Uh, yeah. And what are you studying? In Dupage. College of College of DuPage. DuPage. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah. like, what major? Like, what do you want to? What? Early childhood education. Yeah. So you want to be a teacher? Yes. Awesome. For kindergarten. Oh, that sounds perfect. Yes, and it's it kind of fits into what you were doing in Denver. Yes, there. like that's it's different perfect. stage now. I don't have yeah. a time for, but because now the kids are in school and I'm many things because I have my group in Denver for all the time. I have many another thing. Right, I do. I um I always I working in out house in my house um. Yes, yes, and then you have twenty people there at any given time, so you have to deal with well, that. <laughs> yes, and that is another. Uh, so is that the refugee aspect? So do you have them in? So not only your family, but correct. So we sponsor people through the humanitarian parole program of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you that each application takes about an hour, and then when you have a family of five. I have to do it one after the next one after the next one because I want to bring them all together. Right. I cannot do two today and three tomorrow. So whenever the, the quota opens, I go on, online, I apply as a sponsor. So I'm the financial sponsor for them in the U.S. If the government approves the, the petition, they send a, a letter to, to them in Venezuela in this case. Then we, me and my wife, pay for their tickets to come on a plane and we welcome them here in Chicago. Wow. So they come and we have um, conditioned our basement and our house to, to have living spaces that are separated. 
so they have their privacy we have ours but they have stayed up to six seven months in our basement and house until they are on their feet with a work permit and they secure jobs and they are having enough money to go pay their own rent and car and then they go out so that is uh, beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. so do you have any people in your basement right now no <laughs> no actually this no. is the first time in three years i believe that we don't have anyone <gasps> enjoy, uh, and, enjoy and, a little <laughs> peace for a moment <laughs> yeah wow i miss yes. them yeah, yeah i miss, miss them. them but i'm happy mm -hmm. they uh continue uh their and, life and launch them yeah you know, it's, it's, it's almost like it reminds me of foster parenting in a way mm -hmm. of but you're fostering a family yes. and giving them a space to launch from this is the goal for us um make happy for my dad mm -hmm. um see them happy too for my nephews and nieces um continue in a good place uh say safe right. for them um it's it's good um, yeah. and at that point do they have um so would it be a visa or like or working towards a green card or is it none it's of a that? humanitarian parole and that's Images it parole. they have a legal way to stay here it does not grant any other status than that. So it's the same situation with people from Ukraine gotcha. that they left because of the war. Yes. Uh, I think they are adding Nicaragua and some other countries. Yeah, but there, those are very few countries that you can apply for humanitarian. There's many more that they apply for asylum, but that, that's not what we do. Okay. Uh, we are working through this um, humanitarian parole because we can fly them so they don't need to go through all the nightmare of moving from Central America into Mexico, from Mexico into the U.S. Uh, so they fly safely and it's very organized, it's very mm -hmm. efficient. And even, you know, the same worry that I had at the beginning when they offered me the job here, I don't want to be discriminated, I'm not sure I want to go. My experience, we haven't been discriminated at all. It's all, uh, it's been a Cinderella story. I love that. And it's been the same for them. It's because you are the warmest people in the world. And and I know you also talk about, I think you call it dharma, which I would yes. probably say karma. Correct. But when you give the way you give, I think it comes back to you tenfold, right? Yes. And that's not what we are looking for. It's just we, we believe in uh, energy and, um, and that's it. And I remember when a police officer in immigration, we were having our intercompany visas and he looked at us and he asked, like, how did you guys met? And we said, like, in a party. <laughs> okay, you're welcome to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to say in a church, I will not believe you, he said. <laughs> that's cute. So, yes, that's the most part, uh, yeah. you know, that for us it's been always good. And we want to make sure that people has, uh, have a, a good start in this country because this country welcomes legal immigration. And there's mm. a system, there's a process, there's law that they need to understand and we need to explain to them how to mm -hmm. behave according to the expectations of this country. This country is a country of, of, of freedom, but if you do not behave according to the expectations, there's a system that will punish you. True. So they are pretty much into, at the beginning it's a little bit scared, they wanna go out and drive, they don't wanna do this, but as soon as they understand how is uh, the proper way to drive? Like, do not cut in me. Don't leave. You see a school bus, just stop. And like, right. don't ask me why, but the red sign to stop, you stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I even ask, like, why? Like, yeah. It's, yeah. So, so how many families, and would you include? Her family. Her family, or? Probably 10, I will say. 10 that families are, that you've helped. Yes, through Denver and, yeah. and the, the Cleveland. So you say they're, they're legal refugees how long does that status last for them is it so is it a two year at first two, two and years. then it gets extended uh, you know to some mm -hmm. extra years or sometimes they apply for you know like a, a, an asylum TPS. Uh, tps the temporary protection status is another one that gets mm -hmm. extended here so they can stay legally without a path to citizenship or, or green card mm -hmm. but like the the um, is there a path the asylum maybe say, yes maybe, it depends maybe. but we have been told that less than two percent of the cases actually qualify as an asylum so it's almost like what you were saying israel of until you got your green card and when you were on the work visa it's probably very unsettling though for them because it's like you can't Yes, Settle totally in, see you here in 10 years, right? Like, right. You, know, you never know. That's so true. So is the mission for you guys is 
like a reprieve for them for a period of time, but at some point they're probably gonna, and hopefully that their countries get yes. calmer. Correct, and that's the, so the entire purpose is uh, the families because they have kids. Yeah. The kids are the ones that are enjoying the time here because they are going to a safe school, middle school and high school where I've been really close to them telling them like, here you do not need to fight back with your fist. You have a counselor, talk. Use your words. You know, this is the... And in the country, so we'll say Venezuela, mostly, what would school be like for them? Um, you were in school in Venezuela, so you can probably speak to it. ¿Cómo era ir a la escuela en Venezuela? Oh. Versus aquí el bullying y todo eso. Oh, very different. <laughs> it's very different, but I prefer the school here. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. But were you scared to go to school? Did you feel scared to go to school in the morning or feel like... No, no, no. It's a different time. Yeah. Yes, I was happy for I was a little girl. Okay. Yes, it was different, uh, but good. It's a um, humble life, but happy. Yeah. yeah. Happy. That's nice. Yeah, for that, I'm happy now. Good. Yeah, but, uh, yes, I, uh, yes, but I, I'll, I'll share probably some of what I saw in Venezuela 15 years ago when we yes. got married. Um, I saw a lot of teenagers that they are completely gone. No, now it's different. They are gone because they died. They were yeah. killed. Venezuela now is totally different 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And that's part of life. And is it like, would you compare it to like gang kind of? It's totally about it. Um, at that age, they become a target for gangs or, or cartels, mm -hmm. and they become like cheap labor for them. So they flash some now dollars at the time, some money, some cars, and they get them into do bad things, and they end up in, in a terrible situation. It, either the, the less worrisome will be to go to jail, but if they get in the middle of a shooting, and that's it for them. Mm -hmm. So that's why we wanted to provide a, a different. Um, environment for these teenagers that they are that risky age yeah and having them in a midwest high school is completely different for them like it's, mm -hmm. it's like tell me tell me again like everyone will respect me just because i have to be respected yes and that's how it should be right you know like you don't need to do anything different so it sounds like even if they have to go back they're gonna take this with them yes and and be Kind of more solid. Correct. Because at first when I was learning about this, I thought it was around becoming citizens here, mm. but it sounds like that's not the, it's that's not not the that mission. Easy. And I it's, mean, I'm, it's hard. I, we have seen yeah. people that yeah, they get married and they stay uh, because they found someone that Even they Even that's not that easy. I was, yeah. my ex-husband was from England and Scottish really, but um and even when we got married, it's still it's no, it's, it's not, not easy. an easy path. You still have to go through that whole process. Correct, and but hopefully um, they are able to secure scholarships for college. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So then they get the school. Brian, the, the baseball player, was in conversation with Purdue. Nice. Promising. He's a tremendous catcher and third base player, and he's going through some scouting, you know, showcases. I believe he calls them. Yeah. I'm learning a lot about baseball now. <laughs> <laughs> but he has a gift. He needs to use that gift to, to, to access college. Yeah. And then his life will be completely different. You're right. I mean, I think the few, like we were talking about before, but the few kids that do have those gifts in sports, it is a great way mm -hmm. to get to great universities. And yeah. Yes. yes, yes. And he understands the world now in a completely different manner. He actually said he wanted to do some summer jobs. And I said, let me tell you about what I've seen here as a summer job. Internships. He needs to do internships. Yes. When he's 16, 17, he will probably have that in the future. Yeah, but, but said, soon, very yes, soon. Yes. So he actually looked for one of the most prestigious country clubs in Chicago. Uh, a golfer. Uh, is he going to get... Oh, that's so perfect. I told him... Walk in and caddy. ask for a job. Just drop the yeah. Yeah, well, he was caddy, not a caddy, yeah. he was in the restaurant. Ooh. But like, I told him, like, walk in and ask for a job. And That's he said, a like, good advice. Are you saying that they will give me a job just because I asked for a job? Yeah, potentially. Try it. Yeah. And the caddy, I don't know much about this. I'm not a golfer or anything, but 
Um, when I was at Purdue, Evan Scholars was across the street from my sorority, and Evan Scholars is the caddy scholarship. So the, all the guys in Evan Scholars were caddies, and they do beautiful scholarships. So mm-hmm. tell them to look into that too. And I think anyone can be a caddy. I don't think you necessarily have to know no, how to golf. No, he's working his way on on the, yeah. the country club and enjoying it. And I said you will learn so much about management, about relationships, yeah. about that, and networking. The mom was networking. asking me like, can you write him a, a recommendation letter? And said that he doesn't need it. Yeah, so like, you're right. Whoa. And he got the job. That's, yeah, he that's fantastic. Job. He worked last summer over there, and he's looking forward to do this summer. I bet he had fun too. Yes, that's the most that's important. Good. He had a uh, Fourth of July there in the country club. So look at you. Look where you are. And like, he's the one that wanted to be on the podcast today, right? Too. Yes. So you should have brought him with. Yes, that yes. would have been fun. <laughs> well, he thank you guys good. so much for being with me. It's been really nice to meet you. Oh, nice and to meet you. And he is a joy to work with, and just salt of the earth man and you're yeah you guys are just love the love yeah. it's very it's good good role model stuff